Cal, what are you doing? Well, I'm just stowing away these empty bottles for recycling. That is not an empty bottle, and I can turn it into gold. Well, unless you are King Midas, all I see here is an empty jam jar. Well, in this case, I am King Midas, and I shall prove it. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Okay, King Midas, I can't wait to see this. Let's see you work your magic Absolutely on the can't. dregs of a jam jar, for <laughs> heaven's sakes. I mean, what, what good is that? Well, I'm going to be making a beautiful raspberry salad, as you can see there. We'll just add a little bit of seasoning into our jam jar, a little bit of red wine vinegar, and of course, we'll put a little bit of EVO, extra virgin olive oil, in there. Oh. Okay. There we go, I and then we've got a beautiful it. dressing. We'll just put on our lid again and do the old uh, maraca thing, you know. And then we've got a beautiful raspberry vinaigrette, as you can um, see. There. Now, that is, that's clever. Absolutely, I, Cal. There you go. I do admit, that's clever. That is a really good way of, uh, look, folks, making use of every last bit. <laughs> every last yeah. bit. Uh, I suppose you could do. S you could uh, marmalade anything you want, you know. That's right, exactly. Or uh, honey. Yes, exactly. Example, nice sweet know, dressing. You just, uh, or you could probably, if you wanted to add something that was left in a jar to a soup or a stew, you could exactly. just put a little bit of uh, hot water in and swish it around. And there you go. Yeah, excellent. That's a good. Good tip. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, coming up on the program today, our special guest is Newfoundland musician and entertainer Sherman Downey. And what are we going to be making with Sherman today? We're going to be making some beautiful marinated balsamic lamb chops from oh, the Southern Shore. Oh, lamb! Lamb! Mm. I love lamb. Okay, and Chef Andrea Maunder will be with us today from Bacalao Restaurant, and she's going to be making a superb dessert. Stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. And it is our pleasure to welcome to One Chef, One Critic, Sherman Downey, singer-songwriter. That's hey, your girl. title, right? Yeah, thanks welcome. for having me. Well, yeah, Carl, right it's great to have you here. Uh, we were just joking before we went on the air. You're from, people get this confused, you're from South Branch, Codroy Valley. That's correct. That's way correct. over on the west coast, and we're cooking lamb right from the southern branch. Shore, branch. <laughs> the southern shore. Yes. Right. So people, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit rather crazy. timely, don't you? We knew you were coming, you know, driving all the way and all that kind of good <laughs> stuff. So, uh, well, sure. And as you can see, we've got two beautiful loins of lamb. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to, well, they're French actually, so I'm going to take one of them off and I'm going to cut them up into chops, and then we're going to be marinating them a little, which I'll explain in a little while. A little while there. And Carl, what I want you to do, I'm going to be steaming some new potatoes. I want you to trim them beans yeah. as well, and then you can add them to the potatoes afterwards, okay? Okay, so we've got the potatoes. Going, oh, yeah. Nice. So may I ask where the potatoes are from? Uh, the Southern Shore. Yeah. <laughs> I would say my God, but it's, it's not true. I would say uh, Prince yeah. Edward Island. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the Cadroy Valley. By, way of, by way of Sobeys or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, wherever, yeah, we, yeah, wherever yeah, we got them. Yeah, yeah. The Cadroy Valley, I asked because the uh, Cadroy Valley is so great for vegetables. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. West Coast. Yeah. Most yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bring some over for you next Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of the Conroy Valley, what was it like growing up over there in South Branch? Great. Yeah, I, I guess uh, when I was growing up, there were about 300 people from town. And uh, so, you know, anytime, anytime uh, there was something to do, everybody was there, you know. And same, right. and same thing yeah. still. Like if I yeah. go home for, like, say, a New Year's party or, yeah. or what have you, yeah. the local center, the whole town is there. So it's quite, it's quite nice. I love yeah. it there, yeah. And yeah. what's the population in that area? Uh, still, well, I guess it's lower than that now. I, I hear it's about 200 now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sadly. Not many young people around anymore. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. A lot of good farms out there, like you say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Cormiers are out there doing some good stuff. Down there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We had one out in the, in the backyard for the longest time. It's Is that right? It's yeah. difficult. Do you do any farming as well? No, 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 I don't. Just no. the cooking? How Just long the cooking. You, and how long have you been cooking? I've been cooking oh, too long to mention. Uh, 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 Carl's <laughs> a little bit older than me, so to speak. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, uh, 
are you trimming any fat off that? Or the, no, the, I'd like, like to keep a little, little bit of fat on there, Carl. Uh, a little bit of flavour, but they they were well trimmed, as you can see. Right, very, yeah, very. That's very something I'll, I'll always, you know, have difficulty f figuring out how much fat do you trim off because mm -hmm. I think fat has a lot of flavour in it. Absolutely, so. yeah, me too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to season that with a little bit of salt and pepper there, and then we're going to put a little bit of oregano on there as well, and a little bit of fresh rosemary. We'll sprinkle us on top of mm -hmm. that. You can start to smell that rosemary now. Mmm. And we'll just put a touch of... Uh, that's what you me here for. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of balsamic vinegar on right. And that's going to be enough. I'm not going to put any, any more marination on there. And I'm going to get you to put each one of those onto the grill there, which we've got nicely heated. Beautiful. And uh, there's a set of tongs there for you, Sherwin. Sure. Now, now you can play, so to right speak. Right on, so. yeah. Um, I haven't done, I don't do much cooking, you know. Is that right? No, on the oh, road. Well, we'll, we'll keep an eye on you. Good, yeah, I'm glad I'm learning how to do this because uh, quite often on the road, uh, as a musician, it's always the uh, the quick bite. You know? Bite, yeah, yeah I've, exactly. I've learned that I'm, you know, I'm more of a functional leader, yeah. sadly. Yeah. So quite good. often this turns into a cooking lesson for you. Yeah, well, that's what I'm excited <laughs> about. I did yes. do, uh, I was doing, uh, the first time I had any hand in uh, cooking was high school. Right. And a couple of guys, uh, a couple of friends of mine and I entered a cooking competition at the school, uh, you know, yeah. on, on a whim. And uh, we decided to do, uh, it was a baking thing, you know, and uh, we threw together this uh, chocolate concoction and it was so, um, it was it went so horribly wrong that it, we ended up serving it in styrofoam cups. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, but uh, we won. We won the competition. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. This is funny. Can't I'm... lose with chocolate, right? No. Yeah, no. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, funny. So, Sherman, uh, you actually started out as a teacher, speaking of lessons. I did, yeah. I yeah. Did. Yeah, I was uh, teaching high school. Well, I did the education degree in, uh, in Mun, here in St. John's. And, um, and then I went to Taiwan. I taught for a couple of years there. went to find myself. And... Uh, Turns out I was here all along, yeah. and uh, and I went to, to Goose Bay first, I was teaching in Goose Bay. Okay, yeah. And yeah, great. It's, I, I love teaching and I love the students, uh, but I, didn't, I wanted to give it a try at uh, music, and yeah. so I retired a couple of years back okay. from teaching. So what was, Taiwan, what was that experience like? Great, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, uh, they get a lot of uh, teachers over there, foreign teachers, sure. to uh, lend credence to... Same the, as Korea. The Korea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, English yeah. is a second language. Mm. Great, uh, great schools over mm -hmm. there. They were taught in schools called bushy bands, which were after-hour schools. Oh, right on. Okay. Where the kids would go to school yeah. in the day yeah. and then come to these bushy bands. And, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And How it allowed me to travel, you know. Uh, two years. Two years, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, uh, what about uh, Taiwanese food? Did you uh, get to learn how to make any of it, or you probably yeah, ate a lot of it? Probably the most interesting thing that uh, happened to me over there, food-wise, was uh, we went to a restaurant, and instead of bringing out uh, salted nuts, you know, they brought out a, a big vat of uh, chicken feet. Chicken feet? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. yeah. So they're kind of like this, yeah. and the only meat is in the yeah. palm, so you found yourself yeah. scratching yourself trying to get at the meat. Yeah. Yeah, it was an acquired taste. <laughs> yeah, chicken feet. That would be that would be an interesting experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ever try that, Steve? Or? No, no, I haven't. No. I try no. it. I try it. I, you know, I'm one of those people who try anything. Yeah. Same here. There's not too much I wouldn't yeah. eat, actually, yeah. and, uh, especially yeah. when you've been over there, because everything is available to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting. Even even the I don't know the way the way we, that we would cut a chicken here yeah. is completely different. Yeah, they uh, they bring out the chicken and it would be just cleaver cut. cuts. Cuts. And, uh, you know, so you get the different flavor from the bone out of it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's a different mm -hmm. taste. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be enough, Carl. We can pop that into the oh, potatoes okay. now, and then we'll cover the lid up there, so everything's going to be ready on time. And I think now we'll probably turn them over a little bit. I was just going to ask yeah, that, how, yeah. how long do you keep them yeah. on Because we want to serve them about medium rare, you see. Ooh, oh, we'll get a nice grill mark on there. They do look nice, don't yeah. they? Yeah. I just uh, finished building a house in Cornerbrook, and we have a beautiful island in the center of the kitchen, but regretfully nothing to cook on. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Steve, should I be seasoning this? Uh, no, I, I'm going to be putting a vinaigrette. I'm going to toss them in the vinaigrette oh, okay. afterwards, Carl. So, uh, so on goes the uh, lid. And we turn it on up to high if you want to on the oh, okay. boiler there. Yeah. For sake, because the lamp's not going to take too much longer there. Beautiful. So, how high do you have this uh, on? You know, I'm. Uh, 
I'd love to master the barbecue and cooking steaks and everything, but I hear a high heat is the best. Normally I would have it on a high heat, but because we're inside, I'd have it on like a medium heat. Okay. Medium yeah, we heat. don't want to create too much smoke, smoke in the in kitchen, the kitchen. So, yeah. sure. Plus, nobody would be able to see us. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Good or bad thing, I don't know. <laughs> you come from a musical family. You have a lot of people in your family, like, uh, down through the years who played? Um, no, no, surprisingly. Uh, my father played a little bit of guitar, and uh, my first guitar, actually, the first guitar that came to the house when I was growing up, um, it was his, you know. But I think I think really he wanted to kind of have it in a corner for me to be interested in. Um, and he played a little bit, but on my mother's side, my uncle was really exposed to, exposed mm -hmm. me to a lot of music, but mostly through friends. Yeah, we had a, okay. had a yeah. band in school, and... Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, but um, so I'm the first in the family. So back in uh, 2013, you won the CBC Searchlight Award yeah. for uh, Thickest Thieves. Yes. Uh, what did that do for your career? Um, well, it opened a lot of doors for sure That's because I mean it was a national competition. Yeah. I think there were over 3,000 fans. That's right. You know. Yeah. And um, I won't deny that Newfoundland Labrador has a great support for the arts. Oh yeah. Uh, and so and and, and sort of, certainly if anybody's in a competition in Newfoundland, yeah. there's no that there's yeah. a yeah. chance. Exactly. They really rally behind whoever's yeah. involved. So, um, but it's been it's been great because we get off the island. Yeah. And people who maybe haven't heard of us before. Uh, they've heard about the competition, and so they want to see. Put two and two together. Yeah, and they want to know if you know we yeah. are worthy or what have you. So it definitely brought people to the show. That is crying out for a red wine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go get one. All right. Okay. So good. Perfect. Sure. So what I've done here, I've just put in a little bit of olive oil, some red wine, a little bit of Dijon mustard. When the vegetables are ready, we're gonna quickly toss that, and away we go to the races. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Carl. How are you? Great. Nice to see you. Well, as you know, on the show today, we have cooked balsamic herbed lamb chops. So I'm thinking a red wine for this, but what do you have to suggest? Absolutely. Uh, I love lamb. It's quite rich and gamey, so we want a big wine uh, with nice tannins. And I have great uh, choices for you. The first one is uh, a Spanish wine, Elias Mora, uh, from Spain, 100% Tempranillo, and it's listed at $24. Mm. and 50 cents and the second option is also from the Iberian Peninsula because everybody is uh, lamb in, on daily basis mm -hmm. we have a beautiful Portuguese wine from south of Portugal Alentejo region and is uh, made of four different grape varieties oh really four yes, different grapes four different grape wow. varieties and this one is listed at 25 dollars and 17 cents mm -hmm. and the last and option I have for you is a beautiful product new to the market is from the same producer Eda dos Graus 23 barricas it's called 23 barricas because it comes from the best barrels uh, of the 23 barrels and its main grape variety is, is actually Syrah and uh, is great lovely herbs so it will pair your dish fantastic right okay All of well <laughs> <laughs> this this one I find intriguing uh, Absolutely. The best of 23 barrels. Is yes. That right? And it's a Syrah, that's the grape. The main grape, the other one is uh, Toruga Nacional, which is uh, indigenous okay. to Portugal. Right. And another very important factor is that this uh, producer uses organic uh, farming and self sustain, which is a great uh, concept. Excellent. Okay, well, I'm going to go with the grouse. You're going to love uh, it. 23 barricas. Excellent. You're going <laughs> to love it. Thank you. Now Sherman has done a wonderful job on those lamb chops. I'm just going to add these vegetables there. We've steamed some beautiful new potatoes, some green beans, and we put a nice vinaigrette on the top of them. And uh, now let's go and join Sherman and Carl in the dining room, and let's see if they're going to critique. There you go. Mm. Thank you. A little bit of the red Cheers. to go with this red meat. <laughs> oh, it looks delicious, boys. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's have Tell a us what taste. you think of the meat that you grilled. <laughs> you grilled. On our indoor grill. Oh, it's tender. <laughs> this is the way to grill mm. in the wintertime. Just, just mm. stay in your kitchen. Yep. yep. <laughs> now. Very good. It's so hard to barbecue around Newfoundland because it's so unpredictable. Yes. The weather. I mean, yeah. yeah. As yeah. you know. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... You have to give us your verdict now. What do you think of it? Fantastic. Yeah. 
Mm. It was worthwhile travelling across the island for, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there are leftovers. Yeah. It actually is very good. Yeah, yeah mm. very good. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, I, I, I've heard your music described as traditional folk, country, <laughs> pop rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you describe your music? Um, I would say folk, primarily. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to... You know, John Pry and Chris Christopherson. Oh, great. Man. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'd get out of the house and go for a ride somewhere with my uncles, and it would be a deep purple and black satin. <laughs> um, so maybe I'm somewhere yeah, in between. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I would say primarily folk. We, I did a conference there a couple of years ago, and a lady described us as party folk. Mm. Uh, so sometimes if I'm playing with a full band, uh, we do mm. like to have a good time. But primarily folk, folk I would say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. now John Prine and Chris Christopherson have both performed here on yeah, separate occasions. I've seen yeah, them both. Did you ever get, did you get to meet them? Um, no, I haven't actually. I had a chat with uh, John had um, a steel guitar player come through, or a lap steel guy come through Cornerbrook. Um, mm. We had a chat and everything. I mean, you know, uh, they're doing the same thing, so uh, I know that after a show they like to get, you know, get away for some quiet as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the time I saw John Prine in, in Cornerbrook, there was a lady opening up for them. And the way the Arts and Culture Centers go, of course, you have 45 minutes and a break and then 45 minutes. And I went to the show not knowing there was an opening act. And um, he came, uh, she came out, and she was fantastic, of course, but in the back of my mind I was like, Want to see John Prine yeah. more, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, but he came out after the intermission and played three hours. Wow! Yeah, and nobody was yeah. restless. Everybody no, it, gobbled it up. Well, I went fantastic. to see Krista Berg once, and I didn't think he was ever going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just is this show ever going to happen? <laughs> With all due respect, he's a yeah, very course, lovely yeah. man, and I've met him yeah, and I've interviewed yeah. him on television. But sure. uh, he does long. I mean, he just he loves it so much mm -hmm. that he just and he loves the feedback that he gets from the audience, mm -hmm. you know. And so, well, you know, he's, just a, what you're he's doing, a natural you know? performer, as I'm sure you are as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, tell me about the the songwriting. Is that something that comes? easy to you or is that hmm. something you kind of have to work because I would imagine that it's at times Carl I gotta say it's easy like some of the songs if you sit down and, and the mood is right the songs mm -hmm. come out pretty quickly but uh, on the other hand uh, some others are grueling you know that I have uh, yeah. what I what I tend to do is uh, keep a journal of uh, both um, music ideas and lyric ideas and then Wait for the mood to strike, and mm -hmm. then and then have mm -hmm. something to draw on. You know, what's the most interesting venue or city or town that you've ever performed in? Hmm, good question. Because um, I would imagine there's probably been quite a few places. Yeah, I, I guess one of my favorites would have to be in Australia. Really? Oh, wow. and, uh, okay. Yeah, for, for this reason alone, it was a cold Christmas day <laughs> in Newfoundland, heavy snow. And we hopped on the plane and went to summer in Australia. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. And just yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And they say, you know, that uh, Australians are a lot like Newfoundlanders. Oh, yeah. And their there temperament, is, their makeup. Yeah. And yeah, it's a bit of an island culture, yeah, you know. Yeah, that and, uh, kind of joie de vivre yeah. they have. Yeah, very, yeah. very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a good uh, there's a good relationship between Canada and, and Australia sure. musically yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 So anyway, Sherman, it's been great having you on One Chef, One Critic. Thank you so uh, much for having all me. All the best to you, Thank you. in your career. And when we come back, we'll have Andrea Mondra back aloud with us, and she's going to prepare a delicious dessert. Bacalao is one of the most well-known four-star restaurants in the city of St. John's. A visit to Bacalao always produces a wonderful experience and beautiful memories. And we're so happy once again to welcome to the kitchen the owner-operator, uh, pastry chef, sommelier, and maybe a few other things of that cloud. Well, it needs plunge, and I do that too, Carl. <laughs> Andrea Maunder, and what are you going to be uh, sweetening us up with today? Well, you're going to be sweet and sour, which I think is probably absolutely, you know, yeah. fairly accurate. I could go for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to decide who's sweet I'm the sweet sour. party. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> so it's a semifredo, which oh. means semi-frozen mm -hmm. in Italian, and this happens to be a lemon semifredo oh. with a blueberry, Newfoundland blueberry combo. Now that sounds like a lovely way to finish a good meal. Mm. It really is, yeah. I love a little something tart. I don't like overly yeah. sweet desserts. Me too. Um, yeah. And this is great because if somebody does not 
have an ice cream machine and they want to make ice cream, mm -hmm. this is perfect. So it's not like a gelato then, is it? No, exactly. No. So you don't have to churn it. Now I'm just going to turn this on. So we just before the camera started rolling, we started the lemon curd. Okay. So what is in here is a cup and a quarter of sugar, a pinch of salt, half a cup of lime juice, and eight egg yolks. Okay. And you can see it's just starting to come together. We wanted to be able to do this all in this mm -hmm. segment, but I wanted to. Oh, there's a, something for the cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> so well, when I would do something like this, I would use a bain-marie, in, like in, in, a, in a bed of water. Uh, I see here that you're using just a pot on the stove. Exactly. I have brought two of my favorite, actually three of my favorite kitchen tools. This is a non-stick pan mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. I have a silicone whisk oh, and it eliminates yeah. that so I don't get the sticking, you don't have all right. those little bits in the corners and it's a really great way to do sauces and custards if you're going to do custards for ice cream oh, okay. and yeah, things don't thing. stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I love these, I rely on them. Yeah. So and you, you just want to be see. careful that you don't scramble the egg in there. Exactly, course, yeah. So you're... you just have to watch that. Yeah. And what I have in here as well, um, if you just want to stir that for a second, because yeah, we yeah. almost have lift off. I just want to show people what I do. Instead of zesting the lemon, I just take a peeler. Mm. And you'll see when we strain it off, that's what's in here. So I'm getting the flavor of the lemon mm. zest without having all those little bits to strain mm. out, which is a pain. How are we mm -hmm. looking, Steve? Looks Good, like we're pretty yeah. close there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, so just going to show people the consistency of the curd. So it really coats, coats the, the back, back of the spoon. spoon. Yeah. I'm just going to lay that down somewhere. All right, so we can turn that off. Okay. And we're going to strain that right into here. And that's my other favorite kitchen tool mm. is the silicone spatula. Okay, very Tools good. of modern <laughs> cookery. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, in the olden days, Steve would be scraping that out with... Uh, Wooden spoons. Exactly. Steel, steel and spoon. leaving nine-tenths of it behind. Yeah, yeah. So there we are. So we're just straining it off, and you can yeah. see all the lemon zest That's remains right. there. Yeah. yeah. Which is perfect. Right. So this is obviously too hot right now to turn into anything resembling ice cream. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hang on to my spatula. Yep. So we'll just lay that to the side back that's here. Gonna have so that's cool. going to cool. Yeah. And then what we have over here is the cream that I whipped beforehand. Again, oh. everybody knows how to whip cream, so it's just plain whipped cream. Beautiful. And you want to whip it to the point where it's fairly firm, but not... Uh, I'm going to be able to get that. Maybe you can reach that a little better than I can, Carl. Can you? Perfect. There we go. All right. So what we need to do then is this is the, the lemon curd that I made Which in advance. Which is being chilled, right? Exactly. And you can see it's really nice and thick. Mm -hmm. So this is a great thing. You can spoon this on desserts, on meringues. Mm. It's really lovely. Or on your toast in the morning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And this is a really quick curd. You could certainly do lime. You could do mm -hmm. orange. Orange, yeah. Uh, grapefruit. I've done partridge mm -hmm. berry curd as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing is just, as you can see, folding that together. Mm -hmm. And it makes it light and lemony. And this could be served as a mousse right now. That's right. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So very versatile. We're getting a three for here today because you've mm -hmm. got all the different components. And what I've done is I've lined my little mold with plastic wrap. And these are silicone molds. Right? Exactly. Yeah, and if yeah. you just have muffin pans or whatever, that's fine as well. You could do one big one and cut it if you like, like an ice cream That's cake. Right. So yeah. this then would go in the freezer. And Carl is going to retrieve the ones that I've already done. Is this something that you have on the menu at the restaurant? I do. I have a, a Republic Semifredo. So it's three layers. All oh, right. Okay. It's the pink, white, and green for the Republic flag. Yeah. Mm. Partridge berry, um, creme brulee vodka made locally, and a lime layer on the top for the uh, green. There you go. Uh -huh. So there's Look the Semifredo. That. Beautiful. So we're going to spoon the blueberry compote over. Local berries, of course, of again. Of course. And I have some candy lemon. I did. That looks like a nice mm -hmm. little specimen yeah, there. Yeah. Nice. So we'll lodge that in the top. And you guys can go ahead and try. There we go. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. So get in there, Steve. You hold it steady, and then you can... So it's nice and tangy. The blueberry has a little bit of sweetness. Oh. Folks, this is heavenly. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Thank you so much, Andrea. <laughs> and that's it for this edition of... One Chef, One Critic. This is not an empty bottom. <laughs> well, unless you're King Midas, um, 